Two of the Doug Stewart Show, baby. Let's go. Hammer, you ain't hitting in New York. What? So what you gonna do about that, Hammer? I'm gonna turn this mother out. show apologize i think we didn't have the uh uh the next track muted so y'all kind of heard a little a little remix there hey welcome back to the doug stewart show yeah welcome back to the doug stewart show i think my man rel scott posted it in the chat room so uh, somehow we started talking about the um, the top five. Oh, I know how we started talking about it because they played the uh, last game last night in the Palace at Auburn Hills. They're moving closer to downtown. Um, so we started talking about the craziest things you've ever seen in sports. I talked about that fight with Ron Artest and the Pacers and the Pistons. And so my man, Ralph Scott, just uh, mentioned in the chat room when Magic Johnson announced that he uh, had contracted HIV and was retiring from basketball. Uh, that definitely makes the list. And for a much more or much different shocking reason than, you know, the fight at the Palace Hill and Mike Tyson losing the fight uh, to Buster Douglas, man. And mm, Calipari, you know, those things were kind of like demonstrative, you know, outrageous type things or whatever. But Magic, man, when Magic said that he had to quit playing basketball, you got to remember now, this is 25 26, 27 years ago, um, I think the number is. When we had, this is when like AIDS and um, HIV, you know, was kind of a new thing. In relative terms, it was a new thing. And so we didn't know, like when we heard HIV and AIDS, I, we talked about this before in the show. Back then, when Magic retired, we heard HIV and AIDS, like it, it was almost like the consensus was that you were going to die within a couple of days, maybe weeks. Maybe possibly months. I don't think maybe even months. I think it was weeks. Like, your ass was grass. It was over. And praise his holy name, 25 years plus later, Magic Johnson's still here. (laughs) 
how they say it, Magic Johnson looked healthier than the average ninja. He does. When was this that he retired for the first time? Because he came back a couple of times, and I'm trying to pull it up right now. Uh, oh, so the HIV announcement was in 1991. So it was November 7th, 1991. Let me quickly try to do some math. So you're talking 26 years ago. I was right. Somewhere about 26, 27 years ago. Right. So in 1991, when one of the top two basketball players, two or three basketball players in the game at that time, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, Michael Jordan and I don't know, maybe Akeem Olajuwon. When not only one of the best basketball players at the time, but all time, as well as one of the most entertaining and one of the biggest personalities come out and announce that he's retiring because he's terminally ill, because he's about to die. Remember now, at the time, we thought they were going to die. It wasn't no, you playing no basketball. Playing basketball is the last thing your ass was worried about when you had the HIV back in 1991. (laughs) Basketball? I'm about to die. So, yeah, I think it, uh, I think it qualifies as being uh, shocking. And one of the things that I'm going to list are my top five most shocking things I've seen. The press conference where Magic Johnson announced that he was, uh, was retiring from the game of basketball because of, uh, um, you know, he, he had contracted HIV. I just thought of another one, and I watched a little bit of this last night on the 30 for 30 um, with Michael Jordan going to play baseball. <laughs> right. Uh, Michael Jordan, in the prime of his career, and clearly it was the prime of his career because they had just won three rings, and when he came back to play basketball, they won another three wing, rings. So Michael Jordan retires. Uh, legend has it that he was caught gambling or whatever, and the NBA was suspending him, but they disguised it like this just not to embarrass the greatest player in basketball history. Uh, some people say he just needed a break uh, from basketball. Some people say... Um, that it, he was still distraught about the death of his father, and it was crazy. And the man, uh, th- like, imagine right now if, I don't know, who's the top football player in the game? Imagine right now, just for the purposes of this conversation, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, imagine if Tom Brady retired from football five years ago after their, not not now because he's a little bit older. So say Tom Brady in, in the prime of his career, retired from football, and went and played hockey for a couple years. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Michael Jordan's going to do what? And, like, I don't even think people even believed that he was going to do it when he announced it or, 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 or when you heard about it. Because I think he retired, and then shortly after, he had this press conference, or he let it be known to the press that he was going to give baseball a shot. And he was a big baseball fan, and allegedly, urban legend is he was this good baseball player, and he actually liked baseball better than basketball. Uh, he just was a better basketball player, and so that's why he decided to do it. And the guy was in a baseball uniform. Like, I remember the first time I saw Jordan in that Barons uniform, I was like, this is strange as shit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was strange to see uh, the greatest basketball player of our lifetime, uh, for the most part, wearing a baseball uniform and, and, and actually going out there and seriously trying to play baseball. It was just strange. And, uh, and looking at that, 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 um, that 30 for 30 on Jordan when he went and played minor league baseball, like, I had forgot this, man. But experts had said last night when I was watching this thing on the Puppet Factory, um, they reminded us that at the end of his little baseball thing that he was doing, like he was hitting respectable numbers. Like he was hitting like 250. He had increased his batting average by 50 points. He had had like, I think they said 30 stolen bases. I like had no idea. I don't remember that at all that Michael Jordan stole that many bases. He had all of these RBIs. Like he, the, the experts were saying that if he had stuck with it another year or two, because basically you got to get enough bats under your belt to be proficient, to be, you know, to basically 
get the feel of playing at that level of baseball, you know, professionally. But these experts, and these aren't people that owe Michael Jordan anything. These are people that were non-biased, and as a matter of fact, they probably would want to badger, you know, the whole thought of Michael Jordan playing baseball. But some real baseball people in this story last night that I was watching, and it's an old one, it's been out for years, but it kind of, you know, um, reminded me. Some real baseball people said that if Jordan would have continued to play, that he probably would have made it on a major league club. You hear me? Right. It, it, it wasn't one of the more um, talked about 30 for 30s. Um, and I think I haven't seen the whole thing in its entirety yet. I think I've seen pieces of it. But the last, the part that I saw last night was like the very end of it, where they had these baseball analysts and all of these people and saying from the progression that he made when he first got into the minor leagues to when he retired, or not retired, I guess, when he quit to go back to, to basketball. And remember, at that time, they had a strike that was about to go on and they wanted these scab players to come and play Major League Baseball. And Jordan being a union rep in his sport, in basketball, he just couldn't do that. And so that's when he decided to go back to, be- to, to basketball. But they said that if this dude, at the pace that he had uh, been improving, if he would have stuck with it another year or two, he probably would have made it to the majors. That's crazy. Oh, Lord. And we got to get back to these these present-day topics, man. But I see my man LD from the D, Bye Bye Palace um, from the D, has listed in the Doug Stewart Show uh, uh, Spreaker check. Um, Mike Vick going to jail for two years of fighting dogs. <laughs> We've talked about this. So the cows came home, man. <laughs> that might be number one. That might be over the Ron Artest Palace of Auburn Hills thing. Yeah. That might be number one. <laughs> that might be number one, man. And still to this day, I cannot believe this ninja was fighting dogs after signing a $100 million contract. <sighs> might be number one. That might be number one. We got to go back and look at it, man. We got a bunch of good ones, man. Thank you all so much for your input. But that might be number one. That might be number one. That might be number one, man, because, I mean, y'all know how we were involved in that. Obviously, being in Atlanta, they always wanted commentary from people from Atlanta, you know, to kind of get a vibe of the people, you know, what the streets were saying. And so, um, all in the middle of that. And um, it's just unbelievable, man. It's just unbelievable. And I guess it's not really when you when you think about all of the factors of, you know, where he's from. And, you know, maybe that was something that they did in this part of town. Hell, they do it in my hometown. I'm sure they still do it in my hometown. And being from a different place uh, than a lot of people that had no knowledge that this type of thing actually happened. It, maybe, and we always talk about this. I don't even want to get back in this because it really bogged down the shell. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Um, the number is 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug sure show dot com. The, uh, you know, just the fact that this man was one of the faces of the NFL at the time. And for something as bizarre as going to jail for fighting dogs when you're a, you just signed a deal for a hundred million dollars and, at the time, you you can try to deny it now if you're a Vic hater. At the time, one of the faces of the league, so it was probably Peyton Manning. Uh, Tom Brady was doing his thing at that time as well. You all be they were cheating, um, and Brady wasn't too far, or or Vic wasn't too far behind uh, those guys, and maybe probably even. More- 